Good evening, everybody. My name is Juan Ross. Today we have defender Wilfred Williams, Liberian from Oakland Roots. Wilfred, how are you today in, in Oakland? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Uh, I'm doing well. Just got back from training not too long ago, and so, you know, it's kind of uh, kind of late, but, you know, I'm excited. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much, for obviously, for, for accepting the invitation, Wilfred, and to start off, if you could talk to us, you know, about your childhood in Liberia, if I'm not wrong, in Monrovia. Yeah, so, yeah, I was born in Monrovia, Liberia, uh, but because of the war, um, we, uh, we were forced to move. And so as a kid, I was I moved to Ivory Coast, and I was there. And then we have, we were forced to move again, so I moved to uh, with the Burundi camp, uh, the refugee camp in Ghana. And then I was there until I was about ten years old, and then I came to the states uh, in two thousand and six. So yeah, never didn't really didn't really spend a lot of time in Liberia, but I had the opportunity to go back uh, when I was eighteen. And uh, ever since, I've been going. I've been going back almost every year. Wow, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then, if you could t take us through a day, you know, if you could remember a day in 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 Liberia. Uh, I mean, I can I, I can't really remember any a day in Liberia like uh, when I was a kid because I was I mean I was young. Yeah. Um, but I mean when I went back in 2014, I was I was like I said I was like 18. Uh, I mean, a typical day there, it's like you're up really early. People people are up really, really early yeah. um, around, I mean, before before 6 a.m., my mom my mom is awake. Wow. And she has, like, we, we have a little devotion. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like half asleep, and we're having a little devotion. And, I'm like, <laughs> and uh, after devotion, um, people, the the kids usually go in and, um, get water for the day at the well mm -hmm. and so uh so the so kids would just go and grab water at the well i end up going back to sleep because i'm tired and then <laughs> and I'll, I'll sleep for like i'll sleep for like you know maybe one or two more hours wake up breakfast um uh, hang out with the family uh then later on depending there's football uh i'll go to the to one of the fields mm -hmm. and i'll go watch some football yeah. Uh, the 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 local league, and I just go watch football. I spend my whole day there. Yeah. And just be out and about, uh, really. Yeah. And I come back home later on in the evening and just hang out with the family. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And obviously, like you mentioned before, that there was war in Liberia. Do you do you have any memories of of living through through those tough tough situations? Nah, no, nah, I don't. I mean, I was I was really young. Uh, my my uh my family, my mom. You know, they, they protected us and got us out of the situation pretty early. You know, I, I mean, I do I do have a memory of, like, you know, walking and crossing the border, uh, being, uh, and so, like, crossing the border in the water. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, I have, I have memory, I have memory flashbacks of those. Yeah. Uh, that's about the only thing I really remember. It's, like, just crossing the border wow. um, as, a, as a young kid yeah. um, from Liberia to Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. Of course. And then obviously, when you were a little kid, were was the soccer? I mean, was sport the only soccer um, that, that that you played? Because I know in Africa, soccer is is if if, if not the most played, uh, you know, um, what's it called, deporte in in Africa. If I'm not wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, football is the. Is, I mean, for me, growing up was the only thing I really saw. I mean, I I, I saw some basketball people playing basketball, but like it's not like that. Yeah. Um, but football is everything. Everywhere, I mean, I grew up playing in the streets. Um, like I used to get in trouble with my with my mom about playing football. Yeah. Coming home, putting my my boots in the house. She used to get mad at me. Yeah. She used to throw my boots outside the house. I mean, sometimes you get some whooping because I come home really dirty from school because yeah. I play football at school in my uniform, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and my mom didn't like that. Yeah. And so, I mean, I just grew up playing playing football every time. All the time, every day. The only time I came home really was uh, when I was hungry. Mm -hmm. That was the only time I came home. Even even if I'm hungry, I just go to another friend's house and we eat, and then go back again. We play more football. Of course, of course. And then obviously, you mentioned that that you had to leave Liberia, you know, because of war to Ivory Coast and, and to Ghana. But if you could express to us, you know, like 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 what did you live 
obviously in, 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 in two different countries, you know? Like, was it tough? Like, how was the situation? Uh, I mean, I, I think it was tough. Uh, in Africa, I didn't really, I didn't really understand. I was young, mm-hmm. and so I, I don't really remember a lot. But um, in Ghana, I mean, it was really tough, man. It was really tough in Ghana. Like, we lived in the refugee camp. I mean, like, looking back, you know, I realized, like, how tough it really was at that time. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, as a kid, I just, you know, I was just... I'm a kid, you know, yeah. like, it's, it's, I mean, there's no, I mean, we don't, you don't, you don't really understand it. Yeah. But then, like, bro, like, now that I'm older, I'm looking back, I'm like, wow, like, my mom used to, my mom used to suffer. These people used to suffer a lot. I mean, we're on the, we're on the refugee camp. Yeah. Um, waiting, like, you know, I mean, luckily we had a family that was in the States. I was able to support us and um, send us money and um, my mom worked. Uh, she went to culinary school, and uh, she was able to. I mean, I was I was always very, very uh, blessed and very privileged uh, to not be able to suffer as much as compared to other people. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was it was very tough. It wasn't easy at all. Mm-hmm. Um, growing being being a refugee camp. It's something that nobody wants to be in. Nobody wants to be in a refugee camp away from your away from your home country, away from all your family. Uh, our family was separated. Uh, it's just, it was a very difficult time, for yeah. sure. Most definitely. And then, what, what's Wilford's favorite music and, and food? If I'm not wrong, maybe cassava leaf stew? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who you been talking to, bro? Who you been talking to, I swear? This guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, for sure, I always I love my people's food. Yeah. Um, me, for like my tribe, we're, we're a basa. Yeah. Uh, so my tribe, we love, we love, uh, fufu, yeah. uh, for sure. But I do love cassava leaves. That's my, one of my top favorites too. Uh, cassava leaves and, uh, potato greens. Yeah. Those are my top two still, but like, I love fufu. I, ju- I actually just got some fufu just now. Oh, I went to the, I went to the library restaurant and just got some fufu. So I'm about to like, after I'm done with this, yeah. I'm about to chop, I'm about to chop, chop right there after I'm done with it. Um, uh, music. Uh, obviously, man, I gotta go with the Afro B, um, dance hall, yeah. you know, love, but I do love my Spanish music, though. I do love my Spanish music, though. I love my guitar, I like my bachata. <laughs> Yo, don't get it. You put me, you put me on the floor doing some bachata, bro, man, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm nice with it. Yeah. I'm nice with that bachata, bro. You speak Spanish then or no? Un, un poquito? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I can, some, I can sometimes... Understand it depending on how fast you talk. Yeah. Cause you know I, I grew up I grew up playing at Nancy Dallas, so yeah. that's when that's when the, that's when I like you know learned the, the Spanish culture. Yeah. That's when I learned, I learned everything about the Spanish culture when I, when I was uh, at Nancy Dallas. And there's a huge Latino community also in Oakland and also within the Oakland Root squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big, like yeah. huge. Yeah. I mean, we have we have a few we have a few Latin guys in our team. Um, and, and within the working in the organization as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's huge. I mean, everywhere, man. Latinos yeah. are everywhere. Africans and Latinos were all over the place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What's the most embarrassing song uh, on your phone, if you have one? The most embarrassing song on my phone? Uh, I mean, yeah, I can't really remember. But, I mean, I ain't gonna shy. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna shy over it. I be listening, sometimes I be listening to Justin Bieber. I mean, yeah. Um, let's see, who, who I'll be listening to? I mean, it's tough. I mean, I just love music. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'll rock, I'll rock this on Disney, Disney Channel Music sometimes. Take it, take it back to the, back in the day. Camp throwback. Rock, Disney, <laughs> throwback. Some Jonas Brothers. I mean, yo, you can't go wrong with the throwback music, yeah. you know, as a kid. Yeah, yeah. That's about it, but yeah. yeah of course, of course. Something that us, the fans, don't know yeah. about Wilfred Williams. Something, you know, apart from soccer. Apart from soccer? Yo, man, I love to chef it up. Okay. I love I love to cook. Okay. I love cooking. Yeah. yeah. My mom, my mom's a chef, and so, you know, like, I feel like it's in the blood. Yeah. I love to chef it up, bro. Yeah. You put me in the, you put me in the kitchen, my music they go in, yeah. I'm dancing with it. Oh, I love it. So, love it. so none of your roommates suffer from hunger, I'm guessing there. <laughs> Uh, no, no. My, actually, Pete and I, we, like, we, like, uh, like, he'll help me in the kitchen. Yeah. He can cook. 
Yeah. You know, but if I want to cook, you help me in the kitchen and I'll do the cooking. Yeah. Uh, but the pig can cook too, so we yeah. never suffer. Dang. We never suffer. So that Caribbean yeah. mixed with African Wait, food. Mm. Caribbean, Caribbean mixed with African, Jeez. bro. No. <laughs> it's a done deal here, bro. We never suffer when it comes to food. Of course, of course. And if soccer weren't to be your profession, Wilfred, have you ever gave thought what could have been your profession if you wouldn't have taken the soccer route? Ah, uh, honestly, yo. Um, I mean, I love coaching mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but I don't know. Probably, probably do track. Okay. Probably run. Probably run track. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What events? Uh, maybe. Maybe like, maybe like the 200, 400, like relays. I hated the 400. <laughs> I hated the 400, man. Um, but yeah, uh, you see, I mean, I did, I did about everything. I never, I mean, I like basketball, but uh, no. I'm, too short, I'm too short for that. Too hey, but look at that. Nate Robinson, though. Yeah, that's, that's one, that's one in like, that's one in like 500 basketball <laughs> players, bro. Um. I mean, definitely, definitely not play football. Yeah. That's too much. Definitely not. Uh, probably track, honestly. Right. That's about it. Did you ever run track? Yeah, I ran track. What was your fastest two hundred time and four hundred if you if if you ran those? I can't remember. You can't remember? I can't remember. Nah, I can't remember. Long time. Uh, I mean, like, I, yeah, it was been a long time. I, yeah. I, did, I, I did it because <laughs> I did it because like the track coach and the teacher. So they asked me to run it, and I didn't have to participate in gym class. <laughs> and so, and so, and so I did it. Yeah, of course. But uh, <laughs> you took the easy way out. <laughs> so, yo, I'm all about finding the easy way of doing things, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. And then obviously you you're a left back, and but in your opinion, Wilfred, um, who do you think has been the best left back in Liberia history? Talking about the men's national team, if if you could tell us, um, honestly, I don't know. I don't, I, bro, that's the sad thing. I don't really know a lot about like bro, not in fashion thing. Uh, but there was this guy named I think Chris Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he was the left back. He also played at FC Dallas. Oh, wow. Uh, as well, and so I think I think he was the left back. I can't I can't really remember. Yeah. I don't really know his last, his last name as well, but I, uh. I mean, honestly, he was a great player and he played at Dallas. Um, but I don't really know a lot of things. I just know like I just know like the big names of players, honestly. But yeah. I didn't I didn't grow up in the country. I grew up in the U. I spent a lot of my youth in the U.S. and yeah. so, uh, so now I'm like trying to reconnect with my with my roots and try to be more part of the Liberian community and put myself out there. Yeah. So the Liberians can get to know me. I can get to know them. Yeah. And yeah. For sure, most definitely. What are your short and long term goals? Uh short and long term goals, obviously. Um get a lot of play be able to play this year because last year I dealt with a lot of uh, injuries. Yes. Um I mean that's the short term goal, just be able to play again and get some minutes. Learn term goal. Um definitely, definitely try to uh get my first cap with the national team, Liberia national team. Yeah. Uh that's def that's definitely a long term a long term goal. Uh, be able to represent my country and play yep. for my country. Uh, mm -hmm. and get that first cap. Yeah, most definitely. Ha, ha, has there been any contact from the Liberian Federation with you yet, or no? Yeah, uh, huh. I went back back in 2018. Yeah, and I was there for like three months, and I was training with the national team. Uh, but it was just it was just it was just training because I was I was in the country. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I was there training. But at that time, I was in. I was in a, a part of a club, so it was kind of hard for them to like, you know, call me into camp and yeah. uh, for me to play, for me to play with them. Uh, but now, with uh, with, the, with the new coach and uh, me being a part of the team, I'm hoping that um, you know I can do well this year with the my season here yeah. and be able and be able to get that and be able to get that first official call up yeah. and, uh, and and and, uh, and and get a debut. With and I'm guessing you might have some contact with Sam Johnson, the the forward from Liberia from Rasa Lake or no? Yeah, I know I know Sam Johnson. I talked to him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm I'm still trying to I'm still trying to connect with a lot of the with a lot of the players and trying to 
put myself out there, put my name out there, so people can know me and the, so the national team and the, and the players can know me, yeah. uh, who I am. And uh, so I'm just trying to find a connection here. But Sam Johnson, I mean, we've spoken a couple of times on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, that's about it. Most definitely. What sacrifices has has Wilfred Williams done to be where you are today? You know, because if I'm not wrong, you you moved from different universities, you played for different uh, UPSL teams, and you finally land in, in Orlando. And if I'm not wrong, in Dallas, your hometown had a fundraise for you to stay in Dallas. You know, so if you could talk to us about like what sacrifices have you done? Because obviously, a lot of players, I mean, us fans, just see you guys in 90 minutes, but there's a long time coming from the back until now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been a lot of sacrifices, man. Lots and lots of them. Yeah. Uh, fa family events, missing family events, missing just regular high school stuff, like going to football games, going to basketball games with friends, going to prom, going like all the all the regular stuff, going to missing dances, missing you know just all the regular teenager teenage stuff that like people really do. Yeah. Uh, miss all of those. Uh, miss family weddings, miss family reunions, um, if I had a game or miss my graduation, <laughs> my high school graduation. Yeah. Cause I was, I mean, there's, I mean, just so much yeah. sacrifices and, and stuff, putting, putting the game first, uh, and all just relationship and, and friendship and putting all that, putting football before that. Um, and to get to this point, Dealt with a lot of injuries, um, a lot of emotion, a lot of you know, being depression, anxiety, all that stuff. Yeah. And dealing with all of it, like the mental side of it, yeah. and just to be able to get to this point, um, getting drafted and then getting injured, yeah. doing preseason and, and then being released and yeah. not having a team, and it's like you know, you feel you feel like you you feel like everything is just all the hard work that you put in is just fun. Mm -hmm. But then when you finally get that opportunity, it's like everything is worth it. Exactly. Everything ends up being worth it. Mm -hmm. Everything ends up being worth it. Um, so yeah, man, it's, I mean, it's been a long journey. Like you said, I grew up in a small town in uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, we call it tri city there. Um, but man, great support there from people. Yeah. Great support there from my soccer, my, my soccer family there. Um, they they raised money for me to be able to go and be a part of the academy at C Dallas yeah. um, because my family couldn't afford it and it was a big big step for me mm -hmm. and I've always had I've always had the best support from just families that just believe in in my abilities and yeah. believe like the character that I have and the person that I am and uh, they believe in it and they they. Invest their money, their support, the yeah. love, their prayer, everything is going to be where I'm at today, yeah. and I'm forever, ever, forever grateful for that. For that, and I don't take I don't take that for granted. Um, yeah. I don't take that lightly. I'm a strong believer in, um, um, you know, you just never forget where you come from. Exactly. I'm a strong, I'm a strong believer in that, and um, definitely, definitely haven't forgotten where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Um. I know, I know. I was born in Liberia, but you know, Jackson City raised me and, and made me the man that I am today. Yeah. And uh, all those people, and I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful um, for everything that they've done for me. I mean, there are so many names. Yeah. I, I could, I couldn't even name them. I mean, from the time I was 10 years old to the time like even to today. Yeah. I still have support from just amazing, amazing, amazing group of people. Most definitely. And obviously you're a defender, but from the various clubs that you, that you played for, who has been the toughest forward you have encountered? Ah, uh, toughest forward I've encountered. Oh my goodness. I mean, um, wow, that's so that's so hard. <laughs> when I was when I when I was at FC Dallas, like training with the first team, I mean there are some amazing, amazing players, you know, yeah. like Bobby and Castillo having a job, you know, Mark going against them in training. Yeah. Uh, Las Perez. Las Perez, like I mean, I mean, you know, there's just some top, top players that like, that, like I had to go against. Yeah. I mean, um, you can name a I, few. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I, I've got, I mean, I, I played against uh, Red Bull Reserves. I mean, there, I mean, there's some amazing players. Um. It's just, it's just, it's like it's tough to remember, like, um, 
<laughs> all these players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, it really it really is tough to remember all those players, but like I've played against some really quality players. Uh, it's always tough going against my boy Kellen Acosta. Mm. Um, it's always tough going against him. Oh, the beast. He's a boy. He's, he is shifty. Yeah. That is a shifty left or right. We don't know what we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, currently right now, I mean like going against Tristan, going in training sessions and uh. Not Jack McInerney. <laughs> I mean, yo, Jack. Jack is Jack is a tough one too. Yeah. Mike can Mike can score bangers. Yeah. Mike can score bangers. Yeah. I mean, obviously you got Matt Fundy can score bangers too. Yeah. But like those, I mean, those guys, those guys are like class different uh boards that you have, you gotta like you gotta be ready for them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's man, there's, there's some class different uh, some class forwards that I'm going against. Yeah. Um, for sure. Of course, the biggest trash talker on the field that you know is try, tries to get you out of your game, to get you a yellow, maybe second yellows. I'm, I'm imagining there's there has been somebody. Oh, there's a lot of trash talkers on our team. No, you no, know, no I, mean, team? I, mean, I mean in general, like like that you face on the pitch. In general, I face honestly, it depends on the team. It depends on the team, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like with our team, the biggest trash talker right now is Johannes. Uh, Johannes, the, Johannes, the big trash talker. From Eritrea, correct or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Johannes, yeah, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a, I'm a big trash talker too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love to, I love, I love talking trash and getting people faces too. Yeah. Um, but I know it's all fun, it's all fun, it's all fun to do though. It's all fun. Of course. Um, and then obviously in Liberia, you guys speak Liberian English and obviously English as well. But if you could talk to us, you know, about um, the difference. Is, is there a big difference in speaking Liberian English compared to regular English? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a big difference. Speaking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a big difference. We call it colloquial English. Yeah. Colloquial English. Yeah. Uh, there's a big difference speaking colloquial. When we speak colloquial, it's like you don't pronounce all the words. You don't pronounce all the syllables in the word. Yeah. And so, um, so <laughs> and they talk really fast too. Yeah. My colloquial, is, my colloquial is okay. It's not the best. Yeah. Um, but in Liberia, when like, when I'm home, I know I know that mine is terrible. <laughs> I know mine is terrible. Um, but uh, when they're talking, man, it's bad. Mm-hmm. It is really bad. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's, it's, the flight from Liberia to the States, how long is it, you know, because obviously it's, it's from Africa to, to a whole different continent. Like, if you could talk to us about how many hours. Yeah, as, a, as a whole, it's a 20-hour it's a, it's a flight. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 20-hour flight. It's a whole day of traveling, whole day of traveling. <laughs> so so if, you're trying, if, you're trying to spend, if you're trying to spend seven days in the country, yeah. you got to do, you gotta do like a nine-day travel. Wow. So it's yeah, hella far. It's, it's hella yo, it's so far, bro. Like depend like there's not a straight there's I don't know but I don't know if there's a direct flight. Yeah. Uh usually I either go to Europe. Yeah. And then um and then go to and then go to West Africa. Uh, or or I go to like East Africa before I go to West Africa. Mm-hmm. And then and then you say right now you go like every year or so, correct? I try yeah, I try to go every year. Hopefully hopefully I can go back in December. I'm trying to go back in December. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And then obviously uh huh. I gotta say, I'm trying to. I need, I need to go back, bro. I miss it. I miss home. I miss the place. Of course, of course. And then you're also, you're obviously born in Liberia, but raised here in Tennessee. What do you identify with more? You know, your African side, or obviously right now more with the United States. If you could talk to us about that. Um, uh, I mean, my my African roots are always gonna be there, man. Hell always, yeah. always, like. Right? Like it don't, it don't like I, it. It don't take long to, you know, like it don't take much for for that to come out. Yeah. I'm very, I'm proud. I'm very proud to be African. I'm very proud to be from Liberia. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but you know, I'm grateful that I had the oppor- I had the opportunity to grow up in this country mm-hmm. because um, I learned a lot. I was given a lot of opportunities. Uh, opportunities. I don't think that if I would have been in Liberia, I would or in, in Liberia, I would have had. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of sacrifices that happen. Uh, leaving my mom when I was about, when I was about ten years old, not seeing my mom for eight years. Wow. I mean, uh, I've always had. I mean, I've always had. Like I said, I've always had the support from my family to keep my roots in. Um, but I was still distant away from being being African, being Liberian, um, because. 
Um, so it's, it's made it difficult. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then obviously, right. could, could you speak to us in 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 Liberia in English? Like like <laughs> like, could we hear something? Uh, I mean, hold on, hold on. Um, can I call someone? And then so it can come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Because it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult to do it. Yeah. It's all good though. Uh, well, no, no, we'll make we'll make this happen. I know this man's not sleeping. He's always playing video game on on, on his phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, but I mean, like speak, speak, speaking it, it's like, um, I'll be like, uh. It's so weird. It's so weird, bro. It's so it's so weird. Oh uh, wait, what's his name? Oh, now now see I told you. Huh? Answer your phone. He said he's on the phone with us then. I told you this guy he's he's lying. I'm gonna call it again. He's gonna answer he's gonna answer my phone. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's like this is sick. Yo, yo, fuck this fish. You're not in the boat, boy. Fuck this fish. 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 Your mouth is missing. Your other mouth is here. You don't be rude like that. You're fine. Oh, you're fine. Piggy. That's it. That's for skin. I'm going to have a meal. Don't worry. You'll see. I'm going to eat one time. All right, yo. I'm going to I'm going to go. Cause I, I was, I wanted to show him like I, 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 we're talking about speaking Koloka, but I couldn't speak it. I, I told him I had to call somebody to speak Koloka. <laughs> huh? Oh man, I'm doing an interview right now. Yeah. Bro, I gotta go there. I'll call. I'll call you after the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the dog. This dude is rude, bro. What he say? What he say? I, I, I didn't understand a damn thing. I can, I can, I can repeat what he said, bro. You can repeat what he said. You can't repeat it. You, actually, not. He was saying, he was saying some, some, some bad words. 
uh, I wrote, they saw where <laughs> a lot of Liberians, when they're swearing, or well, especially our moms, when they're swearing, they'd be cussing, they'd be like swearing and cussing our dads, but towards us. <laughs> so I, I, I'd probably be suffering, bro. Because they'd be, they'd be saying, <laughs> If you say all kinds of swear words about our dad, yeah, <laughs> it's what. Nah, but it was just like so. I call him Pichu. Mm-hmm. It's like little. It's like little. It's like little boy. Uh, kind of like yeah, Pichu. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, what else? What does that say? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just like it's just weird. I can only I can only speak it when I'm around like like this. Yeah, so you could obviously speak a hell of well with Sam Johnson if you guys were like conversating in person. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean like I can speak with anybody. Yeah. But like, uh, you obviously you know that like I live in America and I grew up in America. Yeah, of course. Then obviously, if I'm not wrong, when you moved from 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 uh, Liberia or Ghana or Ivory Coast and you came to the states to Philadelphia, Tennessee, how was the transition? You know, because coming from Africa to the states is. It's huge, you know, not knowing everything, you know, and obviously maybe just watching movies, you think, oh, like, it's hella cool out here, you know, but it's obviously yeah. hella different. But if you could talk to us about the transition. Sure, boy, when I came here, I thought I'd be, I thought I'd be seeing Jay-Z and Beyonce, <laughs> all them people out in public. I thought I'd be seeing 50 Cent out here. But, boy, I came here, I was like, yo, where is this? Where's, like, all the big, See? big buildings yeah. and all, all that stuff, but then, like, all the stuff you see on TV. It ain't true. Uh, ain't true, bro. Yeah. It ain't true, bro. All the yeah. stuff you see in the music video, it ain't true. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously at first it was like, it was a culture shock for sure. Like yeah. the food, yeah. my taste buds was different, yeah. you know. Uh, the people. The people was different. I mean, for the first time, like, I was with, like, I was around white people, yeah. not just black people, not just Africans the whole time. Yeah. Um, like, I started, like, I mean, right now, I mean, we're, de- we're dealing with, like, Black Black Matter stuff right now. It's, like, back then, it's, like, I didn't know what, like, being, like, what racism was. Uh, I didn't know about any of that segregation, none of that. I didn't know about any of it. Yeah. Which I can hear and I, and I had to learn about it. Yeah. Because, like, back home... There's none of that. Yeah. We love white people. White people come in. White people come to the country. We want to hug them, touch them, you know, <laughs> hug them, you know. Yeah. And here, it's like, you know, there's black and there's white. Yeah. And, you know, it's, so that was that was that was weird for me. Mm-hmm. And then the school, the school was weird too, man. The school was weird. <laughs> seeing some people, seeing some students disrespecting the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Teachers can't put their teacher cannot put their hands on students yeah. in, in Liberia or watching in Ghana because I went to school in Ghana. Yeah. In Ghana, you disrespect the teacher, bro. You're getting they will beat you, they will whoop you, and then they'll they will send you home, yeah. and then you go home, More. and your mom will whoop you. Your mom will whoop you again. And if your mom is not home, and somebody your brother or somebody is home, and they know that you got sent home from school, and they will whoop you. Before your parents come home, and then so, another whooping, like, whooping, bro, whooping all day. So you better, you so you gotta make sure. Uh, um, I mean, we gotta wear uniforms yeah. over there. They I mean, here, like you know, some schools don't wear uniforms, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we had to wear uniforms. Uh, like before school start, before school starts, like we had to do like devotion every morning, yeah. and we had to stay in the line. Yeah. You know, we have to, like we have to be in a line like a roll call, and like you're standing in your grade or in your class. It's like so that was so that was a little bit like here in America. You just come in, go to your class, and then school buses. That was weird too. <laughs> <laughs> school buses was weird. Yeah. Uh, and then like the lunch, the cafeteria. That was different because over there you either bring your own food. Yeah. Or like people be selling, people be selling stuff at like, by the campus, and yeah. you go buy, you go buy food. Mm-hmm. But like having a cafeteria and everybody eating together and all that stuff, like yeah, it was right. weird. And then obviously when you when you were in Ghana, were you in Accra or Kumasi? And also, what part of Ivory Coast were you in? I was in uh, so in Ghana, I was in the camp. I was in the I was in the, the refugee camp. Uh-huh. That was like I think that's like four hours from Accra. Okay. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I, I went to Accra a couple of times because I had an uncle that was there. 
uh, I, uh, I can't remember going if I've been to Brooklyn before. Mm-hmm. I think I have, but I can't remember. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah. Just, just, I, mean, I love, I love, I love the camp, man. Yeah. Blue Ray camp, I loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, we play football all the time. It was fun. For sure. Do you, do you remember your first pair of boots that you ever owned or had? Do you remember them? First pair of boots I ever, ever, ever had was Umbro. 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 First pair of boots I ever had was yeah. Umbro. And then I came to the U.S. First pair of boots I ever had. I had, wa- I had the Walmart boots, bro. The boots from Walmart. <laughs> The boots from Walmart, bro. That's what I had. Damn. Bro, they used to get clowns for those. <laughs> they used to get clowns for wearing those Walmart boots, bro. Yeah. And like the next season, I think one of my homies gave me some, gave me some, like, I told her, I was like, yo, we gotta get some Adidas or something. Yeah. I went and grabbed some Adidas boots and I'm like, uh, the next time. Yeah. After that, I never wore Walmart boots again. <laughs> <laughs> Just one time. <laughs> Just that one time. <laughs> First time, because, like, I mean, we didn't know. My, like, well, my family didn't know. They just thought, like, boots and boots, you know? Yeah. Which it is, but yeah. it's, like, but it kind, of, it kind of matters at the same time, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then, obviously, we're we're still in quarantine for, uh, I think, like, three or four months now, which is awful. But if you could talk to us about, you know, like, what have you done in quarantine? If I'm not wrong, you've done different workouts with, with big stars, you know? Kellen Acosta, Terrence Boyd, Sofia Huerta, and, and, and other great players, you know? But if you could talk to us about... Well, you have been doing. Uh, yeah, man. Like the whole quarantine, quarantine happening. Just been the best on a lot of my time and on my body, trying to get my body ready for when the season started again. So I've been training uh with uh uh my trainer, uh which is also my teammate's wife, Gina. She she's one of the she's one of the owners at Face Fit Gym, and so. Um, and she's actually, she also trained me. So during quarantine, um, I became an ambassador for their gym and just been working out with like the people that own the gym. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sarah, Jen, and then one of the other trainer Watson. So I just been working out with them. And you know, we just been working out. I've been an ambassador, you know, the first two two and a half months, I was working out six days a week with them. And, um, which is great. And I can really see the difference in my body. Trying to get, trying to get a little, bit, trying to get a little bit bigger, a lot stronger. Yeah. And then about 13, 13, 14 weeks now, I started a IG live, 20 minutes for workout, and uh, started inviting, uh, I started inviting like guests on there to work out with me. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I mean, like you said, I've had a few, I've had some really good, uh, fun guests on there. Yeah. Um, like Zach Sophia. Uh, Danny, Helen, um, I had Kendrick Nunn from the Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who knows? I mean, there's so many people. I had guys, guys, and group guys from the USL League One, guys, yeah. USL Championship, mm-hmm. um, guys from MLS. I mean, all over. Exactly. Like, I mean, there's the list. The list goes on and on. Right. I mean, US national team, women's women's national team, men's national team. I mean, it's just, the list is the, I have young players that are coming up, that are rising, players from Australia. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's just been fun having all these guests on there. Um, and it's incredible for the support that they've given me uh, to be able to come on there and, and go live with me. Obviously, I have Pete on there too. Me and Pete was yeah. on there. We talked We talked about Black Lives Matter stuff. So recently, I've been, you know, doing a workout and then I've been talking about Black Lives Matter stuff. Like, having these conversations, these tough conversations that people don't want to have in front of the conversation. Yeah. And so we've been dig- we've been digging into it. And um, so it's just been great, man. It's been a lot of success. People look forward to it every week. Um, and it's just like, it's just amazing to see all the support mm-hmm. from it. Most definitely. Yeah. Best left back right now. Best left back right now? Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba. So I'm guessing you're a yeah. Barcelona fan or no? Uh, I mean, I like, I like Barcelona, but I'm a big fan of Jordi Alba. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. a big fan of him. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll, Barcelona over Madrid any day. Yeah. Um, I respect to them, respect to Madrid for winning. Yeah. Uh, but Barcelona any day, 
And if you could also talk to us about, you know, if, if, if I'm not wrong, you signed your first professional contract with Orlando City B, you know, um, if you could talk to us about, you know, like what was going through your head, you know, from going to, to different refugee camps, from, from leaving your mom, coming to the States, you know, like all that sacrifice, you know, finally had its, um, su fruto, like how you say in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a, it was a dream come true for sure. Uh, worked really hard for that moment. Uh, uh, obviously, when I got drafted in, um, in 2018, you know, I thought I thought that was gonna be I thought that was gonna be the year, my first year for sure. You know, I was excited when I got drafted. And then going into preseason, getting injured, um, having an ankle injury, like everything just fell apart. Yeah. Uh, it's like man, all the like I'm like. And all the hard work that I put in, I feel like I was gonna be rewarded at that moment, you know. Um, then things took turns, and like, and then it happened. Went and played PDR on that summer. Um, thought I was gonna get an opportunity to get the sign with the with the team in the USL champion, championship. Yeah. That didn't happen. Uh, I mean, it's just a frustrating time because it's like, man, I'm working hard, I'm doing all this, but then it didn't happen. And then. The opportunity came in December. Um, OCB called and said that they wanted to wanted to sign me right away. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it was just like man, it was an amazing feeling to be able to sign my first professional contract and um, something that worked hard for my whole life to yeah. to to make it to be able to be able to see that contract in front in front of me and be able to get paid doing what I love to do. Yeah. And I did that first contract was a dream come true. And uh, I mean, it's just my family, my friends, everybody was happy for me and excited for me. And then I mean, it's, um, I had a lot of support. Yeah. And it's just, it was just amazing, amazing feeling no, to be able to, 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 be able to, to accomplish that dream, to be able to say, man, I played, I signed my first professional contract, to be able to say that. Mm-hmm. And just, nobody can take that away from me. And then uh, it was just I'm very grateful for that. Of course. Who has been your, your, your best teammate so far? Best teammate so far on the roots or in general? In general, yeah. In general, my best teammate, man, I mean, um, definitely my boy, my boy Tresor Mabuyu. Uh, he plays for uh, Charlotte Independence. I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been teammates for a while, uh, from like when we were young, mm-hmm. being roommates at OCD, um, uh, my 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 best friend Nick Bogerman, we played we played a lot of soccer together. Um and uh, I was always at his house. I mean we like we still talk to this day when I use one of my really great he's like one of my really, really good friends. Yeah. Um uh, yeah. I mean, I, I had some amazing teammates man that you know and their fa- their family supported me as well, you know. Just their family supporting me. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here to work for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my boy Corey Kraft, he played, he played at, he played at Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, his family, his family was everything. Um, uh, my boy Jim and Carey, his, his his family was like everything to me. He took care of me. His dad, his dad is my, was my, his dad is my doctor. Uh, and well, and then my boy Riley Parr, his dad was my, his dad was also my doctor too. If I had any knee problem, his dad, his dad was taking, his dad was taking care of me. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure, there's, there's just so many. Yeah. My boy Schuler, my boy Thomas, like, I mean, there's so many people that took care of me, drove me everywhere mm-hmm. to get to this point, to yeah. get to this point. You know, if it weren't for them, man, I wouldn't be where I'm at, mm-hmm. for sure. Of course. Does Wilfred Williams like to dance or sing and why? Yo, your boy likes to dance, man. I can't, I can't sing. I try. I, the only place I can sing is in the shower in the car. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. But I love, I love dancing, man. Mm-hmm. Like I told you, bro, you, you put that bachata on, that I can turn, that dance hall, that I, I can beat. Yeah. Bro, I'm nice with it. <laughs> I'm nice with it. Of course. And then obviously you, you, you signed last year with OCB, uh, but when you started making good money, you know, if you could tell us, like, what did you first purchase, you know, like, like from your first professional check, if you remember? <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the, the money wasn't much, but, um, 
Shit, I mean, the money was definitely not much. First thing I purchased was paying pay my, my, uh, I sent money back home. To Liberia? <laughs> send money, send back, yeah, I sent money back home to my mom, you yeah. know? Because I mean, I helped take, I helped take her, like, try to try, try to help my family out. Yeah, of course. That was about it. That yeah. was about it. Paying bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay, paying bills. Yeah. When you're when you when you're at that when you're at that level, there's the, the check is not really that, that big. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. I get paid. Okay. You know, just helping, supporting my family, mm-hmm. and uh, paying bills, bro. Yeah. Really. Of course. <laughs> Was there someone that you admired as a little kid? You know, maybe an athlete. Maybe you admired your mom, your your pops. Or, was there somebody? Yo, uh, yeah, as an athlete, man, I grew up. I'm an Arsenal fan, and so I grew up watching Thierry Henry. Um, yeah. I mean, I fell in love with the game because of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I just absolutely love Thierry Henry. Yeah. Now, obviously, I admire. I admire my uh, my mom is my number one fan. Mm-hmm. I admire her. Seeing her hard work, you know, how hard she worked and like all everything that she went through. Yeah. Her, her, her shirt. Most definitely. And obviously, what league would you like to play in? You know, you are obviously you played for OCB last year. Right now, you're playing in the NISA league. But what league will, would you like to accomplish, you know? Uh, sure. I mean, obviously, who doesn't want to play in the term? Uh, but if we're going to be, we're going to keep it real. I just want to. I just want to play. I just want to play somewhere where I can make money and be able to support my family. Mm-hmm. Honestly, for sure. You know, it don't. You don't. You don't. It don't really matter. Um, I can stay. In, I can stay in Nisa yeah. as long as I guess, as long as I'm getting paid. Paid to you know, to do what I to do what I love doing, yeah. and uh, I get paid and I'm able to support my family, and support myself. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem there. Um, for sure. But obviously, obviously, I'll, I mean, I would love to give it a shot and go play in Europe at some point. Um, but yeah. For sure. If you were to have dinner with the legendary defender, maybe left back, who would it be with and why? Legendary defender? I mean, um, you can't, you can't really go wrong, you know, having a, having a dinner with Marcelo. Yeah. You know I mean, mine's, mine's, mine's won all kinds of titles. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's won all kinds of titles, so I mean, it'll be it'll be great to have a have a dinner with him and just be with the get get some knowledge of it. Uh, but if you're talking about um, you're talking about you know in the U.S., um, I mean, definitely, definitely, definitely cannot go wrong with Demarcus. Demarcus, uh, yeah, you can't you can't you can't go wrong with him. Absolute legend. Um, so much respect for him as a defender and as a player. Most definitely. Then obviously, 2020 came about. You finally signed with Oakland Roots. You know, how do you feel? And 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 how did this come about? You know, moving to the Bay Area. And if I'm not wrong, 38 hours driving from coast to coast. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's coming from East Coast to the West Coast. Jeez. That was a trip. That was a trip. <laughs> um, I mean. You know, man, it was a blessing. Honestly, yeah. it was a blessing. Mm-hmm. And I found myself, you know, being with no contract. Because yeah. uh, I dealt with a lot of injuries last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, I mean, a lot of teams, a lot of teams weren't even looking at me because of all the injuries I had. And I didn't really play that much last year. Um, I was lost. I mean, I was lost to break it. The game kind of started maybe four. Uh, came off the bench maybe three times, and I mean, you know, I mean, it was just it was just a rough year for me. Yeah, and had a season ending injury as well, so I was like, you know, doing rehab for the off season. It was just difficult. I mean, not knowing if I was gonna have a team. Um, and then Dario called me, the assistant coach, as he used to coach me when I was when I was playing PDL for him in uh, Des Moines. He was the assistant coach here too. He just asked me if I would be interested in playing for Oakland Roots. Wow. Um, and he said he was going to be a part of the coach staff. And I was like, I was like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I did some research and looked up Oakland Roots and I love their, the way the community is, yeah. the way the team is. Um, it's, I mean, I just loved everything about Oakland Roots. Like, 
you know, like obviously they're famous and big on social media, yeah. and um, and so so it's like, man, I would love to be there, you know. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have I have I have friends that play here, um, Bossy, um, he's a really good friend of mine, um, uh, who else? Who else is here? That uh, uh, why am I forgetting? Oh my gosh! Oh wow! I'm not forgetting his name. Pete, Pete, Peter, help me out. He 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 went and played. He's playing for Richmond now. From here. Yeah, he used to play for the Roots. Devonte the Bulls. Devon, yes, Devonte. Yeah, yeah, Devonte. Like I know Devonte and I were good friends. Uh, so like, you know, like I mean, I I I mean, I spoke to them about it. And they made it easier to, to make the decision. And yeah. obviously, my family thought it was a great decision as well. Yeah. So when the opportunity came, Jordan called me. It's like, yo, we were, we were to sign you. And I was like, I couldn't really turn it down because I wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot of calls from other teams. Yeah. And and um, I was nervous about it. I was scared. Yeah. And I spoke to my family. And they were like, yeah, you should definitely do this. It would be good for you to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and yeah. go somewhere new and try somewhere new. And so yeah, and so I made a decision to time with them and and I made I drove I drove here actually because I wanted to drive across the country. I've yeah. never done it before. Yeah. So so my boy, my one of my own boy, he drove with me. Uh and I flew him back. My boy Kelvin, he drove with me and he came here. It was like a it was like a three day drive. We we split we took our time and um right. and yeah, to, to sightsee and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And so, so it was a good trip. Came here. Definitely, definitely it's been worth it. Yeah. Everything's been worth it. The club's been great to me. The community's been great to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, absolutely love, love, love the roots. Love being here. Love being a part of the community. Yeah. I made a lot of connections here. There's a lot, and there's a Liberian community here too that I'm a part of now. That's dope. Um, so, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah, man. And so I'm able to, you know, be be close to home away from home. For sure. And then obviously yeah. you're an East Coast kid. Obviously right now you live in the in the Bay Area in Oakland. Mm -hmm. What do you like? What has surprised you about the Bay? You know, like it's obviously li living in the Bay. I, I don't think like like I told Peter in the interview as well. There nothing compares to the Bay Area. You know, but if you could talk to us about the Bay Area, what has surprised you? Yo, I mean for sure the wine is pricey. The first thing. <laughs> First thing I noticed when I go when I go out to the to the West Coast yeah. was the gas price. <laughs> the so gas, gas yo. I was driving and I went to go grab gas. Yeah. And I almost paid fifty dollars for gas. Wow. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> like couldn't believe it. Gas was like probably was the wrong place I stopped. It was like four something. Yeah. I was like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the food is pricey for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're spending you're spending like twenty, at least twenty bucks for yourself. Yeah. To, play, to eat, uh, if you're taking somebody out to eat, you better be you better have like seventy bucks in, the, in that in that card or in that wallet. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but nah, man, I just love where I live too. Is great. I live right by the by the lake. Yeah. I live by, I live on the lake shore, Lake Merritt, so it's really good. It's like you can just go on a walk, and there's like people always out there, and I mean it's beautiful, man. It's just mm -hmm. like the vibe here, the energy here is different in the in the, in the Bay Area. Uh -huh. you know, they have their they have their own vibes, yeah. which is good, which is good. Different, different from the East Coast. People are friendly. Um, I, I mean, I think people are friendly. Um, it's great to see and go out and see people running and walking. It's really good seeing. It's really good seeing that, like. Yeah. You know, it's not, I love I love seeing that. And then there's always food trucks out here too. Yeah. Good food, good yeah. food too. Most definitely. And then what what basketball do you support? Like what basketball team do you support and why? Well basketball team. So the crazy thing is I do I support I support the Warriors. Yeah. Only because Steph Curry is on the team. I'm a big Steph Curry fan. I'm a big, 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 big Steph Curry fan. Yeah. Um, 
You know, it's like I mean, he he's from Charlotte. Yeah. And so, and so like, um, I grew up. I, I, I kind of grew up in Charlotte a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. I used to go play. I used to go play there a lot. And then oh. I played PDL for the Charlotte Eagles. Wow. And so we used to our games were at Fed Curry High School. Wow. And so yeah, yeah. And then so like I started following. I, ever since I started following him, I looked to know all about David before he went to Davidson and all that stuff. And so and, and plus, I mean, like he's a great guy. I love I love the guy. Have you met him? Uh, I've never met I've never met Steph Curry, but I would love to meet Steph Curry. I'm pretty sure you're gonna meet him now that you play in Oakland. I, I'm, I, I hope I hope that's the case. <laughs> I hope that's the. I would love I would love to get him on my IG live in the 20 minute court. That would be dope. Dude, imagine <laughs> that would go crazy. Yeah, if, if, that hap- if that happens, I retire. <laughs> <laughs> and then I retire. That happens. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you played. Um, you entered a match, you know, uh, for Oakland Roots. But you could talk to us about, you know, the environment, the fans, you know, for, for being, uh, for, for playing at Laney College and obviously considering it being Mesa League, you know, like, mm-hmm. talk to us about the fans, you know, the, the fill of the stadium. You know, Oakland Roots fans, major, major fans, major fans. Like, yeah. it's just crazy, like, the support from these guys. It was just the first time meeting them at the Jersey release party. It was unreal. Yeah. Uh, the love that people have for the city, um, and you know, you see, you see a lot of like a lot of like you know teams in Europe, like the 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 fans that make the team mm-hmm. and the support from the community yeah. that make the team. A lot of especially a lot of teams in in, um, in England. Yeah. You know the com- the community owns the team. You know, so uh, the support and being being like. The only, I guess, the only professional team in Oakland now. Yeah. I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong on that. It was San Francisco. Um, I mean, but in San Francisco, but yeah. they're not Oakland. Yeah. But you know, it's just great, like the support from the from the fans, man. Like the music, the, the chanting, like yeah. they're literally they're literally the 12th men. Yeah. Like when we're down, I mean, we when we're down, like they're still going and still going and still supporting, and like yeah. it's just amazing. The love, the love, the support is unreal. Um, I mean the vibe, the vibe there at the game yeah. is crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. If, if you've never been to a Roots game, you definitely gotta come out. I need to go out soon. It. Soon. Hopefully, hopefully, man, we'll this get year. back to playing with some more fans. But, yeah. uh, but in the meantime, buy stay safe. Stay exactly. safe. Yeah. And then obviously, 177 days later, um, after injury, you know, you you can you come on for. For uh, Fondy, you know, if you could talk to us about, you know, after waiting so long, you know, and, and playing the, the sport that you love. Yeah, man. That was, that was an MCL sprain out for a long time. Yeah. It was really hard. Um, came into the roots in January. Then, um, uh, <laughs> MCL sprain was bothering me. And, uh, had a little hamstring problem because of my MCL, so I'm out longer. Um, but it's just I worked, I worked really hard to get back to the, to playing again. Yeah. It was just a lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of emotions through that. And when my name was called to go and, and, and to go in, and also making my my roots debut, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was it was an emotional time for me. I mean, I was, I was very happy and I was excited to be able to step on the field again and be able to be able to compete. Yeah, um, um, definitely, definitely a day, definitely a day uh, I'll always remember. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Wolford, um, being in the in Oakland, Oakland Roots locker room, who's the funniest and shyest player on the team? Because I'm pretty sure it's, it's crazy in that locker room. <laughs> Yo, the funniest, the funniest guy in the locker room? Oh, uh, jeez. Um, probably, probably, uh, um, uh, I mean, it depends, it depends who's going at it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, N- N- Nana can be really funny though. Uh-huh. Nana, Uncle Nana can be yeah. really funny. Uh-huh. Um, but definitely, definitely the, 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 the one with the jokes is definitely the movie. Who? Movie, movie, a movie. Oh, uh, from DR Congo. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely, he's definitely, he's definitely the, 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 the father of the team. Yeah. He's always, he always got jokes. He always got jokes. I mean, he's also the youngest one on the team, too, so. Yeah. Man's always got jokes. He's funny. Uh, Johannes is funny as well, yeah. but, you know, he can be funny. He, he does some dumb things that, 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 you, that makes you laugh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and the shyest? Uh, shyest on the team? Um... I mean, I wouldn't really say shy, but Danny, Danny, uh, Danny is pretty shy, yeah. but not really. I mean, he's comfortable with us, but like, if somebody were to walk in like Danny, sure. it, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Who but has, he's funny, no, Danny is funny too. Yeah. <laughs> who, who has the best and worst fashion in the locker room? Oh, worst fashion? Yeah. Worst fashion is Nikolai. <laughs> Nikola has the worst fashion. Uh, Johannes, Johannes, uh, because uh, we used to do this thing where it's like the worst dress. The best dress. And, uh, and we used to be in the best dress. Mm -hmm. But Johannes, Johannes used to get, Johannes used to get, get, uh, get those two. The worst dress. <laughs> uh, best dress? Um, he, he's actually flat to him. He's actually fly. He's won. He's, he's won a couple of them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He, 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 he's up there. Uh -huh. Um. Uh. I mean, I kind of. I mean, I, I. I mean, I always stay clean. I stay clean too. Yeah. Um. You try to stay clean and don't get the worst stress. As long as you don't get the worst stress, you're good. Uh. But yeah. For sure. And obviously, obviously, being in, in Oakland, who who has been like that one player you know that, that you connect with like at another level? You know, like you you um, maybe go out and eat together. You know, like you, you guys talk. Like I'm guessing there's somebody. Uh, I mean, obviously, Pete and I were roommate. Oh, okay. Um, and so we're close. We're close. Um, I'm pretty. I mean, like I'm pretty. I'm pretty tight with a lot of the guys. Uh, actually, going from I Nile. No, 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 we're pretty close. I'm pretty close to Nile. Yeah. Um, um, always training, working out, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Then what, uh, a, a funny moment, you know, that us, the fans, don't know about that maybe occurred on the field during a game, maybe a practice at the hotel room, you know, like like maybe even in the par apartment, like a funny moment that most people don't know about. Um, uh, <laughs> In the moment, I mean, always anything. <clears throat> people always, people always calling your highness. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you know, we're, I mean, we're, we always call your highness. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if you just saw the video that the Wiz posted uh, with us at training the on filter. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like, it's just like we're we always making fun of your highness. Uh, with it for his beard. Yeah. Uh, for I mean, just just about anything. There, people always calling him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's always, it's always fun in the locker room too. Uh, this guy, this guy's like always, he's always on time, but always, um, uh, on time. Yeah. He's never, he's never like early, early. He's always on time, always ready. This dude, always every single time, he's always running. Yeah. And he makes it right on time. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> For sure. And obviously, if you could talk to us about you know the diversity. Uh, in the locker room, you know, because there's a lot of Latinos, there's obviously African Americans, there's obviously African players, you know, like it's 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 a crazy combination. Yeah. Uh I mean, I mean diversity is like one of the you know biggest things for Oakland, Oakland roots. I mean Oakland is very diverse. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's important that the team is diverse as well. Uh everybody's represented. And um everybody everybody respect each other. Um uh, for sure. Everybody respects each other. Uh, everybody, everybody wants and likes to learn about it, about each other's culture and stuff, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, you know, like the Latinos. I mean, everybody wants to like, you know, learn the music, whether it's the music and like the culture. I mean, just everything. Everybody, everybody's pretty tight. Yeah. And uh, listens and listen to each other and want to learn about each other. Well, definitely. And it, uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the co I mean, the coaches in the club try to emphasize that as well. Yeah, that's great. And, and in your opinion, Wilfred, what do you think African teams 
need to do to keep their talent, you know, because like how I, how I told you yesterday, you know, Nagy was born in Liberia but chose to play for the States. Samuel Umtiti was born in Cameroon but chose to play for France. But obviously being African, what do you think African teams need to, to do to, to not lose their talent, you know? Uh, I mean, it's tough, man, because the structure is not there. Yeah. You know, the money is not there, too. Mm-hmm. So it kind of it kind of makes it difficult. Like, you know, there's a lot of politics within the sport. Like, sometimes players go back home and they don't get paid. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's like some, some of it's not organized. And uh, so, like, players don't want to come back and do it. They're like, the facility is not great at times. And, like, just some things are not good. So sometimes players don't want to come back and deal with that, and they rather they rather go and do with somebody somewhere else. Yeah. And so, or they might feel like they want to play somewhere where they have an opportunity to win titles mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, you can't you can't you can't really get mad at them, yeah. you know, for that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, me, I mean, my brother national team, like now now things are starting to get a lot better. Yeah. There's a, lot, there's a lot of structure now in the national team because they, they had they got a new new president and he's changing a lot of things and he brought in a new coach and he's changing a lot of things mm-hmm. and so it's just like you know little by little players are gonna be want players are gonna want to play for their country because things are things are gonna be changing things are changing of course and and how was the 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 level you know uh, in Nisa. Uh, the level in Eastern, it's, it's pretty good, honestly. It's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's the same level as uh, USL League One. Um, um, I mean, on our team, we got a lot of veteran guys in here. The, the level of training with here is unreal, higher than when I was at. Um, I feel like you know, that was OCB. Wow. I mean, our, our team is pretty young at OCB. Right. You know, there's not a lot of leadership there. Not, you know, but here, there's a lot of, like, a lot of leadership here. A lot of veteran players, and so the the, the level of the, the men is just high. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, the level on it, the, the level is still the same. Mm-hmm. I think I I believe that we the team that we have now, I think we can compete in the USL championship. Right. Right? 100%. For sure. Do you, do you do you have any ritual before a game? Like do you pray? Do you listen to bachata? Maybe like is there something? Uh, I mean, obviously, music music is huge. I listen to music. Uh, on a typical game day for me, like my mornings, like, you know, if it's a home game, definitely eat like two breakfasts before they have a lunch and then have a pregame meal. So like, I'm eating like maybe four times before, before like a seven, before like a 7 p.m. game. Damn. Um, yeah. Or, um, um, and then... Obviously, I got to do my prehab. I got to make sure I'm, my prehab roll out. Um, definitely got to... Um, um, boots got to be clean, for sure. Got to have clean boots. Um, and, uh, you know, got to make sure I'm going to the locker. Got to be dressed, yeah. dressed well. Yeah. Uh, feel, like, feel like I'm going to work. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, just listen to music. Mm-hmm. Listen to music. I got to be dancing. got to be smiling, you know. Well, yeah, don't really, yeah, don't, don't, I don't really think too hard about the game. Yeah. Just, I'm just having fun and just dancing and having fun with my teammates. Well, exactly. Yeah. And obviously, 2020 has been crazy, you know, from Kobe dying, from COVID, from, from George Floyd uh, being killed, you know, and, and a whole lot from looting and protesting, you know, and, and, and taking out statues and everything, you know. Obviously, being a colored man yourself, Wilfred, what what are your thoughts, uh, you know, on on this whole Black Lives movement? You know, like uh, I want to know from you. Uh, man, with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, man, um, I've been having discussions with people, mm-hmm. trying to educate myself, trying to educate others. Yeah. Um, I mean, with every with everything happening, uh, you know, I strongly believe that like we need to have these uncomfortable conversations with each other yeah and um i don't believe i don't believe in wearing i don't believe in it but um martin luther king says writing is the is the uh, is the boy writing is the voice of the unheard and so um people that are doing that is because they've not been heard for so long yeah 
And so, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe you should do it. Mm-hmm. But you know, what can you really do? These people are hurt. You know, um, racism is still happening, even in my hometown. I know there was a video that happened. I and, saw uh, that. It went, it went, it went viral. And, um, and it's just crazy that you know, we have to look through that. Like yeah. A couple of days ago, some kid from some kid in uh, message Wilfred Zaha, uh, and he got a twelve year old kid got arrested for uh, a threat, mm-hmm. a racist threat. Yeah. You know, uh, we're still dealing, we're still dealing with these things, and it's like people still don't get it. People don't understand it, and uh, the protests, all that stuff happening, people don't understand why people are protesting. No. Uh, people are protesting peacefully. Uh, taking a knee, people don't understand why people are taking a knee. They just think that it's about the flag and it's yeah. about disrespecting people that are in the military, but it's not. Yeah. You know, until people start, until people start to really open up and want to listen and uh and and uh, and just have an open mind of what of, of, uh, of why people are doing protesting, we're, we're never gonna move forward until people. You decide that they're ready to have uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're never going to move forward, yeah. and so, uh, and so that's that's something that needs to happen. People need to educate themselves. Yeah. Schools, schools needs to people. Schools need to change the way they do things. Yeah. Textbooks need to be rewritten. More Black history needs to happen because this country is this country is being the story the the history of this country is being told by one side, and that is by the white people. Mm-hmm. It's the only, it's the only, only story that only side of the story that you hear. You don't hear about the black, the black, black, black side of the story. Yeah. How, how, how black people built this country, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's some, there is this thing, there's this thing that I saw. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think it said, uh, it said something about you stole the land. White people stole the land from the, from the Native American. Black people built the build the country and then Latinos maintain the country. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, that is so true. Yeah. <laughs> like it's crazy. I was like, man, that is really true. They yeah. stole the country. They stole they stole the country. They stole the land from the people. We built the country. And then the Latinos people are the ones that are maintaining the country. Yeah. And I mean and then people are talking about illegal immigrants and all that stuff. Like well, you want to send all the, you want to send them back, but guess what? Who you who you got wanted to, to get your your uh, your products from now? Your, your veggies, your your fruits, and all that stuff. I mean, who's there to, who's there to do all that now? Yep. If you're gonna send them back, especially doing especially doing talk times like this, yep. it's the Latinos that it's the Latinos that have been doing it, but but you want to send them back? Yeah. They you, you calling them illegal, but they're doing all these things for you, but then now 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 you see their value. Yeah. how valuable they are mm-hmm. and um it's just like man we just we just gotta do better as a country we gotta yeah. do better as a country we gotta move forward yeah. like, we have to find ways to move forward stuff like this should not be happening you yeah. know people are people are still dying people are still shooting people like killing killing innocent black and black people just yeah, yeah. not being served yeah and it's been it's going crazy. on for years, you know. It, it, years, it, man. Over 400 years. Yeah. Over 400 years just as not being a term. Yeah. You know, Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor Killer is still living and is still enjoying life. Yeah, exactly. And then and, and then with the situation with Vanessa Guillen, you know, being murdered, decapitated, you know, and, and that's what's being happening. And this is the military of the United States, you know? The military. And it's like, it's like, what needs to happen? Like, do we need to go into a civil war before people can really wake up? Exactly. Like, I mean, we sh- it, sh- it should never get to that point. At the end of the day, it really comes down to, like, just basic human decency. Yeah. That's all it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Like, just be, a, just, be a, just be a decent human being and know that if this was to happen to my child or my, or my family, I wouldn't want, I would want justice for them, too. So I'm going to give justice to my uncle, son, or daughter, or their parents. I agree. Interview Wilfred, if you could talk to us about, you know, would you rather play the Champions League final or play a World Cup with Liberia? Yo, play a World Cup final for me for my country, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent for the World Cup final. I mean, like even even now to this day, like the reason why I'm Messi and all, I mean Messi and Messi and Cristiano are world class players, but 
you know, they're missing one title. Exactly. They're missing one title. Whoever gets that first title, whoever gets that title first, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely going to be top. There's no, there's, there's never, there's not going to be a discussion. Exactly. Until, until, until one of them gets that title. Agreed. Well, thank you so much, Wilford, you know, for, for your time. And, and obviously for your sponsor, you know, I, I really had a blast talking with you and getting to know you better. I wish you the best of luck, you know, with, with Oakland. Hopefully you guys can still continue play this season. And maybe God willing, you can see you re- represent your, your home country, Liberia, maybe in an African qualification match, you know, with, with Sam Johnson and, and, and others. But like I said, thank yeah. you so much. God bless you and your family. And, and like I said, thank you. Nah, bro, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Um, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to speak with you. It was great to, you know, to be able to talk to people from Oakland, you know, just to, to, to get my name out there and, and, uh, and be able to have discussions. I mean, like I said, we, we got, we got to talk to each other and, uh, have uncomfortable uh, conversations as well. Exactly. So I'm really, I, I appreciate you having me in here and, uh, thank you. Best of luck. And I'm glad that we actually got to do this. Thank you for watching my video. If you guys could share it with your family members and friends, that would be much appreciated. To all the people around the world who watch my videos, thank you so much. If you could like and subscribe to my channel, I would love that a lot. Until next time, thank you.